uh, connecting the generations. And that's still a part of what we'll be looking at tonight, connecting the generations. But we will, uh, I believe the Lord has broadened the concept uh, to uh, talk about spiritual trailblazers. So the title as it now stands is spiritual trailblazers. So let's think about a trailblazer. Well, it's somebody that goes into the wilderness and uh, blazes a trail so that others can follow. And uh, as other people come and follow behind, they're going to widen that trail and smooth it out. And, and that's, that's what the concept of a trailblazer is. I mean, you can be an explorer and you can just go off into the woods and not, not to be concerned about anybody else, just be focused on yourself. And you wouldn't be a trailblazer. What makes you a trailblazer is you're opening up a way finding a path so that others uh, can join you, so that others can follow behind you. That's a real leader, and that's what God is expecting of kingdom leaders for them to be trailblazers. We'll find out that it's throughout the Bible, but to, to give us an introduction, I want to start with a natural example and talk about Daniel Boone. Uh, he was a trailblazer, and he lived in North Carolina, but he went across the Appalachian Mountains and explored the area of Kentucky. And uh, he found a path that uh, to go from Virginia to Kentucky. Now, we may all know that now as the Cumberland Gap, but of course, when he was doing it, mm -hmm. uh, it, it was a, a frontier and uh, people weren't familiar with it. I, I'm not saying he was the first person that went back, but he uh, back into that area, but he was the trail blazer. He opened up the trail, and after he had identified a trail, and it was a 200 mile uh, route that he uh, blazed a trail on. Then he went back and got 30 uh, frontiersmen, experienced frontiersmen, and those 30 they came out and they began to mark the trail better and, and clear out the obstacles and clear out the trees and, and make it so others could come behind. And then over the next seven decades, 300,000 settlers followed Davy Crockett. But it all started with, I mean, uh, Daniel Boone, but it all started with one person, a trailblazer that tr blazed a trail into the wilderness to open up a path so that others could follow. That's a trailblazer. But what's interesting is that concept is throughout the Bible. And that's where what we're going to be exploring tonight the concept of spiritual trailblazers. And, and it's especially obvious uh, in Isaiah 40, and I'm going to ask, ask Sherry to read these uh, verses three through five. But I want to say that basically what this represents, these, this passage that she's going to read, is that in olden days, the kings, uh, as they were going to go into an area uh, of wilderness, they would send forth someone before. And that might be called a scout. It might be called a herald, uh, uh, a pioneer, a trailblazer, a lot of different words. But basically, they were going to find where the king was going to come. And so they would blaze a trail. And not only that, then others would, would come in and follow that trailblazer along the path that had been blazed. And then they would begin to smooth it out. They would begin to move all of the obstacles. Now let's read that concept out of Isaiah 40 verses 3 through 5. The, vo the voice of one calling out, clear the way for the Lord in the wilderness, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Let every valley be lifted up and every mountain and hill be made low and let the uneven ground become a plain and the rugged terrain, a broad valley. Then the glory of the Lord will be revealed and all flesh will see it together for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Okay, so if we if we just think about this, then there, the king is going to send someone, he's, and that's you. He's going to send you into an area, into a wilderness area, and he's going, he wants you to prepare a trail, a pathway. And you won't be the only one. You'll just be the first one. And there'll be followers that come along behind you and they begin to remove the obstacles and they cut off the top of the mountains and the mountains are brought low. Well, I mean, and they, the valleys are raised valleys up. Valleys are raised up. And so the, 
pathway is straight. And there, so there's lots of people uh, operating and moving along this pathway, but it's for one purpose to bring forth the glory of the Lord. And so God is requiring uh, his kingdom leaders to be trailblazers. Amen. Amen. To, to prepare the way, to begin to prepare cry out. the way of the Lord. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. That was, that's what John the Baptist was. John the Baptist went out into the wilderness. He was the voice out there in the wilderness crying, prepare the way of the Lord. Glory to God. This is an exciting message Amen. because Amen. God is looking to each of you as a kingdom leader to be a trailblazer. Now, this is the basic concept of it that you receive from the generations and the people that come before you and what you have received, uh, you turn and freely give it into the lives. You begin to pour it into the lives of other people. Go to your family, go to the children, go, uh, go to the people mm -hmm. around you. Begin telling them and giving them a revelation of Jesus Christ. And so you're opening up a pathway where the hearts uh, may not have even been receptive. They ne may never have heard about uh, Jesus Christ, but you're gathering what you have heard and what you've gleaned, and you begin to pour that into other people's lives so that they can follow the path that you're telling them about and the revelation of Jesus Christ. I mean, That's the message in a, con uh, in a nutshell. Yeah. Yeah how a trailblazer operates in the supernatural realm, the spiritual realm. Now, see, you may be a loner. You, you may think, well, I'm just a loner and I don't need anybody that went before you. Well, those people, if, if you start out on your own and you don't uh, build on what has come before you, then that makes you a rebel. Mm -hmm. So we don't want to be a rebel. Uh, so we need to connect to the people that have came before us uh, receive what we can from them and if you just uh, are a good christian you just want to go to church on sunday morning and hear you hear the message mm -hmm. and you don't want to uh, release or pour out to anybody then that, that makes you a, a stagnant pool so you don't want to be a mm -hmm. rebel you need to be connected to those that came before and you don't want to be a stagnant pool so you want to pour out to the people that uh, will come behind you and after you uh, uh, speak into their lives mm, that you come in contact with uh, and that may just be the children around you you mm. know uh, Sherry and I heard a woman say this the other day that God uh, began uh, telling a woman that she needed to be evangelizing the children in her community that were running around playing around her home and she said oh she was an older woman and she said oh my legs don't work my hips don't work but but God said well your mouth works <laughs> you're, you're with that <laughs> We're without excuse. I'm out of work. And maybe uh, you, you might think, well, I'm limited and I, I can't do that. Well, but your mouth works. And and so uh, we're all, if you're going to impact the world um, and, and you want to bring forth the glory of God on this earth, then we need to be pouring out. Hallelujah. And, and I want to talk about Jesus Christ as the ultimate but trail trailblazer. I mean, he is the perfect trailblazer. And so we look at him as an example and one of the things that he did really on the mount of transfiguration and this was in matthew 17 and and uh, mark and uh and luke in verse uh, chapter 9 uh, he went up on the mount of transfiguration and so what did he do up there he met with people from the generations before Woo, him. I he, you. he met with uh moses and elijah and he also took up there the young ones that he was discipling he beat her the Peter, uh, James, and John, he took them. So he was connecting with the generations that came before, and he was pouring out the, the generation that would come after him. And he, you know, basically he was pouring into the lives of 12 men that were very close to him, and then a little bit larger group beyond that. But everybody that has come in the generation since then, they all believed in Jesus Christ because of what his disciples uh, did so he started there with 12 men mm -hmm. uh, just 12 and, and a few women and a few others around him and that has gone on now for billions and billions of people 
So he is mm -hmm. uh, the trailblazer, the ultimate trailblazer. I mean, well, I the mean. New Testament calls him a, a trailblazer. Mm -hmm. uh, and and uh, there's one word, archegos, archegos, and uh, that's uh, several times in the New Testament. It's in uh, uh, Acts uh, chapter 3, verse 15, and he talks about he's the archegos of life. And so he's the trailblazer of life. And, and if he hadn't, uh, blazed a trail for life, we, we never could have found it. And then in Acts uh, 5, verse 31, he said he's the, uh, that trailblazer, he's the trailblazer, the, he's the archegos uh, that has been seated at the right hand of the Father, and he's the archegos, or uh, the trailblazer for uh, for repentance and forgiveness. Mm, mm, like, mm, hallelujah. God. So do you know that Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, is a trailblazer? He's also, that word archegos can be translated as leader, as a pioneer, as a trailblazer. Mm. That's who he is. Uh, he's one who connected with the generations that came before him, and he's the one that poured into the lives of, the, of his disciples a new pathway, mm -hmm. a new pathway of life, a new pathway of repentance and forgiveness. And then we'll see, and I'm going to ask Sherry to read this, uh, Hebrews uh, 2.10, and we'll see that he's the archegos or the tra trailblazer of salvation. Let's look at this verse. And this comes from the expanded uh, translation. God is the one who made all things, and all things are for his glory, through whom and for whom all things exist. He wanted to have many children share his, his lead, bring many children into glory in sons into glory so it was fitting or appropriate that he made the one who leads people leader pioneer source of their salvation perfect through suffering okay so what did this translation what was the translation here was that the expanded uh, expanded okay so in the expanded jesus is called uh, a leader a pioneer, pioneer, an originator. So, mm -hmm. I mean, there are a lot of words here that can be translated from that one word, mm -hmm. archegos. And so it's a pioneer, a tra trailblazer. A and what is it in this case he's talking about? About salvation. Right. Because he is the originator of a family. Jesus was and he is the ultimate trailblazer. And he uh, made this path for all of us to follow. Hallelujah. Each one of us has followed this path of salvation to become a member of the, the family, family of God. God. So he was the trailblazer. That's what Hebrews uh, uh, 2.10 says. Now let's look at Hebrews 12.2, Sherry, because okay. it talks about him being a trailblazer, but a little from a little bit different perspective. Let us look only to keep our eyes on Jesus, the one who began, pioneer, founder of, leader, prince of, our faith, and who makes it perfect or completes it. He suffered death or endured the cross, accepting the shame as if it were nothing, disregarding, despising the shame because of the joy that God put before or laid ahead of him. And now he is sitting, sitting at the right hand of God's throne. Hallelujah. See, God set the trailblazer Hallelujah. of faith, the pioneer of faith. He's seated at the right hand of the Father. And we're supposed to follow the example of Jesus Christ. Amen. And Amen. so uh, the, in these four verses, which we've talked about, we've talked about several things. He's the trailblazer, the pioneer of, of life, of uh, repentance and forgiveness of salvation and of faith. Now we call uh, Abraham, we Amen. call Abraham the father of, of our, our faith. faith, but Jesus is the trailblazer. He's opened up so many more ways to operate in faith. Uh, we didn't see Abraham uh, raise the dead. He, he was ready to when he was willing to sacrifice his son Isaac, but he didn't have to mm -hmm. because God intervened because God has a son. God would provide Hallelujah. his own self glory to god hallelujah, at hallelujah. The cross. and so uh abraham had 
is the father of our faith, but Jesus is the trailblazer Amen. of faith Amen. to show us new ways of operating in faith, faith that we couldn't have even comprehended had it not been for Jesus opening up the way that we could see what God has in store for us. So now, new territories. Okay. So new, new territories. Some of you are entering into some new territories in the name of Jesus. Maybe it's a it's a new new way of thinking. Maybe it's a, a new passageway that's going to uh, a door, a new door uh, that's going to lead to to other other things that the Lord wants you to do. Uh, also, I just sense a uh, in this in this group tonight uh, that that the Lord is 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 heightening your uh, knowledge of of who he is and what he wants you to do. And there is a broader picture out there. Some of you have been looking so in a narrow, with a narrow perspective. And, but the Lord says, broaden, broaden your, your thinking and broaden your, your expectations. Uh, because that's what a trailblazer, uh, when they start going down a new path, a new way uh, into a new forest, into a, a new set of, um, uh, of uh, woods, if you would, um, such as Daniel Boone, you know, they just, they just keep going. It's one step after another, one step after another. And, and so this is, this is what we're talking about tonight, uh, that you're a trailblazer. You're a pioneer. Hallelujah. See, uh, 20 years ago, the Lord spoke to me uh, as I gave a prophetic uh, word to a group of people that there are continents mm -hmm. in him yeah. that have not yet been explored. Hallelujah. He wants us to come on and find out more about who he is, the revelation of Jesus Christ. And we've got to explore that. Do you have in your heart a restlessness that you're not satisfied mm -hmm. where you are? Mm -hmm. You're not satisfied about being in a religious system that the people are starving and and malnourished right but you want more you want to go higher with the lord hallelujah See, that's what's in my heart i have this restlessness mm -hmm. i want to go mm -hmm. higher <clears throat> and years ago and this may be 35 or 40 years ago the lord showed me that i'd be going up a mountain and there'd be a lot of people that would want to follow me uh, but some would well they would begin as we got to a plateau they'd want to stop there uh, but i knew i wanted to keep on keeping on uh, that I needed to just keep on. And that that has been driving me. I, I, I have this restlessness within me to go higher and higher with the Lord that I'm not satisfied mm -hmm. where I am. I, I As Sherry and I talk about, uh, I breathe, I live and breathe mm -hmm. destiny. I want mm -hmm. to know my destiny. I want you to know your destiny. Hallelujah. Higher and higher. See, there's a lot of different concepts included in, in this trailblazer. And it's, it's like a pioneer. It's an originator. It's a, a creator. Somebody mm, who's mm, creative. Mm, mm. So you may want to explore ideas uh, or, or explore, uh, do things or, or invent things or, or write books or write things. You, you're, you're, uh, you're somebody on the uh, forefront. You know, Jesus, and, and this is a different Greek word, but he's also called a forerunner. Uh, mm. And he's gone behind the veil into into the heavenly hallelujah house, into the holy of holies for us yes for us so that we can go where he has gone hallelujah and he Praise poured his God. he poured his blood on the mercy seat so now we can go where he has gone he's the forerunner that tells us that there that tells me that there are other runners that are going to follow in his mm, path mm, uh, mm. and so are you restless are you restless about where you are and you want to go higher with the lord you want to go uh, and find out more of the Lord Jesus Christ and greater revelation. Well, that's that's where I am. That, that drives me. Mm. And it's not just about me, but it's about the people that we see out Amen. there. Amen. The, the people that we come in contact with. See, Sherry and I have gone places that it's called the unreached uh, nations. We've, we've uh, gone there mm. to share Jesus in places where others haven't gone. And, and I think about uh, a community here in in our city where um, it was a low income uh, area, a low income community. And there was a little girl, a little, like she was about yeah. 12 years old and, and none of her friends and nobody in her family were, were born again or, or had a close relationship with the Lord. And so one day she went, one night, she went 
uh, stood by her window and looked up and, and prayed to God. You, you'd think, well, I mean, she wasn't even born again. She didn't have anybody born again in her family. And how could she, how could she pray and, and get her prayer answered? But mm -hmm. you know, she did. She prayed to God. And this is what she prayed. She said, God, would you send somebody here to teach us about the Bible? And uh, you know who he sent? He sent Sherry and me. We went into that community and it was filled with a, a young people and your children. And so we just started reaching out to the children and uh, ministering to the children. Amen. There's nobody gone in there and taught them about the Lord. And, and we led all of those children to the Lord. Uh, they all accepted uh, Jesus Christ. And then their parents came and they said, well, will you teach us? And so we turned around and we started teaching them and, 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 we taught. We, and we bought them all the same Bible, all the same Bible, because they didn't know how to look up scriptures. And so we would just say, turn to page uh, 233. And so they would all turn to page 233 and we would begin to teach uh, the word of God. So, so we were teaching the children, leading them to the Lord. We we're teaching the adults and leading them to the Lord and laying hands on people and uh, seeing them filled with the Holy Spirit. And when we're doing all of that into an area where no one else had gone uh, to, to teach. And I, I think about one day there was a little uh, girl on my lap, a little black girl. And she looked up and patted my cheek and asked me, well, where did the black go? Did it go away <laughs> after I grew up? Because uh, she had never been around a white man. There had never been a white man go in there and tell them about Jesus, Jesus. Christ. <clears throat> so she thought everybody was born black and, and she'd never been around a white man. Uh, but you know, God wants all of us yes. to receive and then turn around and give out to other people. And that's opening up a pathway, opening up their hearts uh, to the Lord Jesus Christ. So the glory of the Lord can come forth. Amen. Amen. That's, that's really exciting. It's a, you, but you know, uh, Paul wrote in 2 uh, Timothy 2, Timothy. verse 2, 2 Timothy 2, verse 2, he said, take what you've learned from me. He's writing to Timothy. He said, take what you've learned from me and turn around and deposit it in faithful a leader. Yes, and amen. Faithful leaders. Amen, and that's, amen. that's what we're doing here on the in these Zoom meetings. We're we're taking what we've learned and what we what has been imparted to us and the anointing that's upon us, and and we've turned and uh, poured out to other people because we have a heart for the Lord Jesus Christ to come forth, and and we're crying out, pray, prepare, prepare the way, way of the Lord of the Lord. We're just a voice in the wilderness, preparing the way of the Lord. Because why? Because we want to open up a pathway that hasn't been opened up and we want people to come along and follow us and then the glory of the Lord will come forth. And we know that the people that follow us, that they're going to go on and do more than we've done. They're going to do it bigger and better and faster than we've ever Amen. imagined. Amen. <clears throat> and that's what we're expecting out of you. Hallelujah. That you're going to go and do things that we haven't even imagined. And uh, because God is uh, uh, making you a trailblazer and putting Amen. things in your heart and causing you to have a fire within you Amen. Uh, to take what you learn from the people that have come before you and to turn and see <laughs> that other people are, are needing Amen. the Lord Jesus Christ and they want to receive uh, what you have and for you to pour out into them. And then raise up trailblazers. This is all Hallelujah. About, this is all about opening up territories that have not been opened up, going higher Amen. with the Lord, Amen. not being satisfied and staying in a comfortable uh, place, but but wanting to stick your neck out and take risks that you'd rather make a difference in this life than just simply uh, having a comfortable life. You want to make a difference in the lives of other people. That's what a trailblazer is. Amen. 